What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to go over the next problem of contest that happened yesterday. Code 4, 629. This is the Kate Beautiful String. I was not able to solve this problem, but after reading the editorial, I think I understand the solution. So I'm going to go over it with you guys, okay? So just bear with me, okay? So what is Kate Beautiful String? You're given the, the integer n that's greater than 2, and you have to write down all the strings of length n, which contains n minus 2 letters a and two letters of B in the order okay so here based on the problem statement we're just gonna generate all the possible strings of length n that have two B's and the rest are A's okay that's what this means n minus two letter A's that's this is what this means is two two letter B's and the rest are n minus two A's okay that's what we're doing that's what this problem statement is saying okay now here, recall that string S is less than T of length N if there exists an I. Okay, so this is just, this this problem statement is just explaining the less than operator. Okay, when you use compare to in Java, in, in Java it's compare to, but in C++ it's less than. So this is basically saying that if you're compared to the characters and the characters are less than each other, then that's what this is saying, okay? Okay, so here they gave us this example. If N is equal to five, so our string is length five, right and then we are generating all the possible representations of the string that have two B's and the rest are A's so you could see based on this input statement there's two B's B B and the rest are A's okay here and all these are sorted pretty much uh, the strings are the order does matter yeah so so what they did was they generated all the possible combinations of two B's and the rest are A's and then they sorted it that's what they did here okay it is easy to show that the list of strings contains exactly n times n minus 1 over 2 strings so this is the number of combinations of strings that they have the total combinations is n times n minus 1 over 2 where n is the length of the string okay so now they want us to print given a num number k right that is between 1 and the number total number of combinations of strings we have to print the kth string from the list Okay, so you might be wondering, how am I going to do this problem? Well, if you were to brute force everything, as in write every single possible combination of these strings, all n times n minus 1 over 2 strings, right? Then sort it, then get the kth string, you would get your answer. Except because of time constraints, that's TLE and that's too long. I actually did that in the first thing and I got too long. Time limit exceeded. It was not as efficient, okay? Then I tried something else. I tried generating only, I tried uh, generating all the combinations except up to the kth one, right? So what that meant was that I, what I did was I created a max heap of size K and I added every single possible combination into the size K and get that, the kth string. When I did that, I also got TLE, okay? I got TLE on that case as well. So I was wondering how are we supposed to do this? Okay, without generating all the possible combinations and then sorting it and then getting the kth string. Okay, so to do this, actually, it's actually very straightforward. You have to figure out the pattern that is occurring based on what they gave gave you. Okay, so let's let's look at let's look at the example. So we have a a a b b. Okay, and then a a b a b. Okay, so. From this, you could see that what's going on is that no matter what happens, if I sorted all the strings, right, I generate every possible combination, whatever length it is, right, and I sort it, I know that all the A's are going to be in the beginning, okay? All the A's are going to be in the beginning based on uh, sorting, how like, because sorting A is less than B, right, the, the character, the character format of A that a character number and ASCII value of A is less than B, right? So we know that the smallest, the lowest possible, like from K equals one, right? It's going to have the format of all the A's are going to be in the beginning. And then the two B's are going to be in, in the end. And that's for any size, any size of uh, N. Okay. Any size of N. We know that's going to be the case because of how sorting works, like how, how they compare each character. See? Yeah. So we know that, for whatever length of 
n. It's going to have this format where all the a's are going to be in the beginning and the b's are in the end. So since we know that there's only two types of letters, letters a and b, if I were to just find the position of the, the where these two b's are after the kth iteration of getting the kth string from the the kth string so like after all this pattern iteration right where the b's are moving if i figure out where the b's are moving and get that position of the last two b's right so let's say let's say k is four let's say i'm find the want to find the fourth string right after it's all sorted i generate all the combinations if i just find where these two b's are like this the first b the leftmost b and the rightmost b if i just find what positions that is after some fourth iteration I could just add all uh, add a's to the rest of the string and that would just be my answer right so if I figure out a way to get the the position of the leftmost b and the rightmost b I would be able to get the string that I have to return okay so that that's that's a key value okay so uh let so I'm gonna do now the rest of it on paper in order to show you guys how to develop the the pattern of the bees okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to write the position of every single B every single B for each test case every single uh, leftmost B and rightmost B of the index for every K okay for every K iteration and I'm gonna try to develop a pattern in order to find the answer for this okay so I'm gonna Go to on paper now, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that. All right, guys. So I drew the corresponding K's and the corresponding strings of A and A's and B's, and then the corresponding positions of the left B and the right B. So here, the left B is three, and the right B is four. Left B is two, right B is four. Left B is two, right B is three, and so on and so forth. Since we know that the values of the B's will always be on the right for the first K, and the, the values of A so on the left, we know that the leftmost B will start in this position. What is this position? Since there, since the Bs are always going to be on the right and the left B is going to be one less than the position of the right B, that's what this position will be. So the right B is in the position of the far most right and that's N minus one. So then our left B is going to start at position N minus one minus one, where N is the length of the string. So this position is N minus one and this position is n minus one minus one, which is n minus two. So the left B is gonna start at position n minus two. So if we could figure out where the position of the left B is after a certain amount of iterations up to K, then with the left B's position, we could find the right B's position. And then after that, we could stop and then set the B positions of where they are in the string and then fill the rest of A's. And that will be the end string of the Kth beautiful string. So that would be what this code would do, okay? So first let's find the left position of the B. So we're gonna start at N minus two, cause that's the first starting position. And then we're gonna iterate downwards. And as we could see based on the pattern, the B's position goes down by one, it stays. Then it goes down by one, stays, stays, goes down by one, stays, stays, stays. So it either stays or goes down by one. So we know that N minus two, the B, uh, the leftmost B is gonna start at N minus two and it's gonna iterate down to zero. Okay, and once we find the position of when we stop at whatever k value is, then we could just set the position of the leftmost b and the position of the rightmost b. Okay, guys, so how do we know when to stop when we're iterating from n minus 2, our leftmost position of our b, going down to 0? Well, let's say, suppose that our k that we want to stop at is 6. Okay, let's say we want to stop at 6, and we want to return this string, and we want to find the position of our left b. And that position is this B, right? This position, which is one. How do I get this position of one? So what am I gonna do? Well, let's look at how many different positions that the leftmost B could be at. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? That'll be the, the number of different types of positions that it could be at. It could either stay at this position or it could be down on the right, any of them to the right. So seeing any of these to the right, right? That must be. All right, so that will be the total number of positions that this left must be could be at. So it could be one, two, three, four, five, six. Now let's say our, we want to stop at position at k is equal to five. Well, how many positions can this be be at? 
Well, let's count. One, two, three, four, five. So the diff total different number of positions that our leftmost B could be at will equal to K. And if we were to check from looping from n minus two down to zero, then remove all the number of positions that it can't be at, we will get total number of positions that this leftmost B will be at. So let's use this as an example. Let's go back to k equal to six. There's six total positions that this B could be at. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, let's iterate from n minus two. This position go down. All right, let's say I know that it won't be at this position three. Like it won't be at it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do six minus, there's one B at this position three. So I'm gonna get, take that out, okay? It cannot be that, all right? Then I'm gonna check this position, go down. Remember n minus two, right? It was started at three. Now I'm gonna go down to two. Well, how many number of positions are there at two? There's two of these. And let's say we know that it won't be at this position of two. All right, then we're gonna subtract six from two again. So I'm gonna subtract these two. It won't be at this position. All right, now we're at position one. Let's say I know that it will be at this position and we're gonna stop and break, okay? So this position, we know that there will be three positions that are possible at position one. See, one, two, three, and we'll keep that. And that would be our leftover where we stop at, all right? So I'm just telling you guys how we're doing this. So I'm gonna start at six and I'm gonna subtract number of positions that it can, let's say we, we know it can't be at three, so there's, there's one position that's at three, right? There's one B at three, we're gonna subtract six from one, we'll, that will be five, they'll, they'll leave us with five, right? Five of these. And let's say we know that it can't be at this position two. Well, there's two Bs at position two, so I'm gonna just subtract five minus two, or like our leftover five, right, that we have after subtracting one. Five minus two, so I'll get rid of these two. And then I know that there's three left over, and the, and the only possible way the leftmost B can be at is at these positions, this one, this one, and this one, okay? So that's like an example of how we're gonna do it. All right, guys, so how do we know the number of Bs where it stays at that position, right? How do we find that, where it like stays at the position? Because we have to subtract that number from the total number of ways that it could be at, right? So we have to dis use that number to discard it, discard that number, okay? Well, let's, let's look at this. At position one, index one, the Bs stay three times. The leftmost B stays at three times at position one, okay? What about position two? How many Bs stay at position two? Two Bs stay at position two. All right, what about at position three? One B stays at position three. Hmm, well, that basically essentially means the number of Bs that stay at the position that I'm currently on at I is going to equal how far it is from the end. So if you look at this, let's say at position one, number of Bs that stay at position one is three, right? Three three of these stay at posi position one, one, two, three. At position one, that is actually how far it is from the end. The end is at position four, right? Four, and four minus one at the current index of one is equal to three. And this is a number, is a number of times that the letter B stays at position one. One, two, three, see that? Do you guys see it? Do you guys see the relation? I could do it at position two now. Let's see position two. How many times does B stay at position two? Two times it stays at position two. Well, from the distance from the end for the end most position minus two, this position that I'm currently on at two is equal to two. And that's the number of times that B stays at position two. Well, about three. Well, if B stays at position three once, right? We see a one B at position three. The number of times it stays at position three is gonna be four minus three, which is equal to one, all right? So basically, the number of times that the letter B stays at position I is going to be the distance from the end, okay? So I'm gonna write that from here. Number of times stays at position I is going to equal to distance from the end. And what is the distance from the end? So we know the position at the end based on whatever length n, right, is gonna be n minus one, right? Because it's indexed at zero, at index zero. So our position is gonna be n minus one, right? So the number of times b stays at position i is gonna equal n minus one minus i, okay? Do, do you guys understand? Because this is the distance 
because we're trying to find the distance from the n, and the n position is n minus 1. See? The n position is n minus 1 if uh, we're indexed from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Our string length is 5, and the n position is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so it's 5 minus 1, which is 4, right? This is the equation where we get from the number of times b stays at position i. is going to equal to n minus 1 minus i, okay? What we're going to do is we are going to subtract this number from k whenever it is not at the right position, all right? So we're going to subtract k minus this distance, n minus 1 minus i, every time it's not at the right position, all right? Until we get to where it is at the right position, right? So whenever it's not at right position, we're going to subtract k minus n minus 1 minus i. So that's the equation that we formulated from this. Now, let's say our condition is over. Let's say we got the right position that our leftmost b will be at. Let's say we're at k is equal to 6, right? And we eliminated that leftmost b can't be at. So this, this position we can't be at here, it can't be at here, it can't be at here. And let's say that we know that it will be at this position of 1. Now, how do I find the rightmost b now? Let's say I found this position that it's right, okay? Like after eliminating all the runs that are wrong. Now how do I find the right position, like this position? when k is equal to 6. Well, in this case, if we label the indexes, my right position is at index 2, right? So this is the right position at index 2, and my left position is at index 1. Now, wait a minute. Based on these choices, there are only three possible choices that my right position could be at. It could be a here, here, and here. So to get the position at 2, at position 2, 5 minus 3 is 2. So that means that to get the rightmost position, all I have to do is take the length of the string, subtract by what's left based on after eliminating all these, the values of k. So it would be n minus k. That would be the right position. So our right position, all right, okay, I shouldn't write not at right position. Here, let's read right now. So here the b of right is actually gonna equal to n minus k when k is finished removing the ones that are not right. So yeah, that's how you get n minus k. After the three choices, there's three choices left. I take, there's total length of 5 minus 3 is 2. And that's exactly the same as the position of my right position. Okay guys, so now, the final thing we have to figure out is when is the condition that we have to stop at, right? When is the, when do we know that our i value the position that we're at is at the right one. Let's go back to our six, all right? When k is equal to six, okay? Uh, we, we're trying to return this string, right? And we're trying to return one, okay? So um, when we're subtracting, let's see what our k value is. So our k is equal to six, right? We start at k equals to six, which is the total number of, total number of uh, positions that this b could be at, right? So let's iterate from n minus two, which is at the back, down to zero. Right. Well, this our b value is supposed to be at one, so it can't be at three. Right. We're iterating from uh, n minus two to zero. Right. So it's not three. So we know that it can't be at one. All right. When i is equal to two, we know it can't be at two because our i value is supposed to be at one. All right. We know this because we just know from the answer. Like we know after labeling this from the input statement that our i our our value of our first b should be at value i equal to 1, right? So it can't be at 2. two. So we cross these out. So 6 minus 1 and then minus 2. And then now we know that our i value is at index 1, right? So this is the right one that we're supposed to stop at. And this is equal to k is equal to 3. But wait a minute. When k is equal to 3, that's exactly the same as the number of b's that I repeated here. So we're supposed to stop when our k value is either less than or equal to the number of b's that are repeated. Okay? That are repeated at index i. So when our k value is less than or equal to the number of times that b stays at position i, that's right. So it's less than or equal to n minus 1 minus i. Okay? And yeah, that's basically how you would do it. And now let's go to the code now. All right, guys, so I'm going to start coding it right now. Um, so here's here's what I have, the basic code of a C++ program. 
uh, this is my including statement. Just to include all the values of the the header files for C++. I'm using define ll as long long. Okay, so that that's just to make typing faster. Okay. Oh, whoops, my bad. Um, so first I'm gonna read in the test cases t. So I'll do that. Create a t, and I read in test cases. Uh, and I'm gonna do while t minus minus to read in every single test case. Um, each test case is written on line n and k, so I'm going to read in n and k. Okay, so read in n and k. Okay, so now after that I'm going to do the code that we just did. Okay, so I'm going to start at, uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay, I'm going to start at four. I is equal to n minus two, and I'm going to go up to down to zero. Okay, that's the position that we're checking at from leftmost position, right? Down to zero. Um, then I need to find the distance that uh, no, I need to time find the number of times B stays at position I. So I'm gonna call that B stay at position I. Um, what the heck? What is what's this? What's going on here? Oh, LL. Okay. Um, I'll do LL then. What's those for loop? Counts up to max. Oh, whoops. Minus minus. What is going, what's the problem? Define for loops counts up from maximum. I equals N minus two. Okay, yeah, now it's gone, okay. Um, now I'm gonna find the number of times B stays at position I, and that's N minus one minus I, so. Num times stays at I. Num times B stays, B stays is going to equal to n minus 1 minus i. Okay. Um now I need to do the do 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 I need to check if k is less than or equal to n minus 1 minus i then do it. So if k is less than or equal to num times b stays at i, and that means I'm at the right position, right? That means I'm correct, I'm done. All right, that means I'm done with the loop. So I need to set my b, my left b position, which is i, and then my right b position. Okay, so the left b position is, uh, do, 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 do. okay, so I'm gonna create a string that has all values of a, so I'm gonna call this current string, and it's just gonna have, uh, how do I fill a string up with all a's? Hold up, how to fill up a string with all a's. Characters in C++, let's see, how do I do that? Du -du 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 -du. My internet's bad, sorry guys. Okay, what about this? Uh, la, 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 la. No, I don't wanna use memset. Um, oh, I could just do this. Okay, uh, width and then the character, so. Width is gonna be n, character is gonna be a. Okay, so this is gonna create a string of length m and then all the values are gonna be a. Now, now I need to essentially just, uh, so I know my left position, my b at left position is gonna be i, so then I'm gonna do current string at 
i is going to equal to b. Okay, and that's my left position, my b left position, right? B left. Uh, yeah, and then I need to do current string at n minus k is going to equal to b also. And then I'm going to break. I'm going to actually I'm going to see out current string. And then I'm going to break. Okay, so I'm going to exit out the for loop. Uh, now, otherwise, if it's not less than number of times b stays, I'm going to subtract k minus equals to num times b stays. Okay. And yeah, that's pretty much all the code that there is to it. Let's run it. <laughs> okay, um, so seven, seven, five, one, A, 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 B, B. All right, that's right. Uh, five, two, A, A, B, A, B. Yeah, that's right with the output. Five, eight, B, A, A, B, A. Yep, that's right. Five, ten, B, B, A, A, A. Yep, that's right. Uh, let's try three, one. A B B, yeah, that's right. Uh, three two, B A B, yep, that's right. And then let's try twenty and one hundred, and that's right also. A A B A A A B, yep. Yeah. Okay, that's save and then submit this. Whoops, I don't need to save it actually. I'll just submit. And it got AC'd. Yeah, it got accepted. Okay, so that's how you do this problem. I'm really tired now. I have to edit this video, and I'm actually going to wake up really early tomorrow. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.